So we had a trade go down today in the NBA with Justin Holiday being dealt from the Chicago Bulls to the Memphis Grizzlies. I'm just going to give you an immediate thought, immediate reaction on this deal and what potentially happens to the value of these players involved in the deal. To get through the details of it, the Memphis Grizzlies get Justin Holiday, the starting small forward from the Chicago Bulls, and in exchange they give up Wayne Seldon, they give up Marshawn Brooks, and two second round picks, the 2019-2020 second round picks, which are both unprotected as far as I can ascertain at this point. So the big question is here, what does this do for, for these players' overall value? Let's start with uh, what happens here with Justin Holiday. He so far is the 65th ranked player over the course of the season, but over the last month, that value has dropped 111th over the last month, despite playing 34 minutes a game. And that's because he's shooting just 34% from the field. He comes in with his reputation as a knockdown shooter. He's not that good of a shooter, 36% from three on the season, 30% over the last month. And those numbers, the 1.8 steals, it's coming in 34 minutes a game. Heading to Memphis, if finding 34 minutes a game for him, I don't think it's going to happen. Yes, Brooks and Seldon go out of the rotation, but let's be honest, they were playing six minutes a game combined. Brooks wasn't playing, and Seldon was playing a handful of minutes. So Holiday comes in, he takes those six minutes. We get that. And then Garrett Temple is the one starting at shooting guard. There's Shelvin Mack in there who'd been playing some shooting guard minutes. So we can eliminate all of Shelvin Mack's shooting guard minutes pretty much, and he plays primarily or exclusively as the backup at, uh, behind Mike Conley at point guard. So that gives Holiday some minutes there, um, either replay, I think Garrett Temple loses some minutes, but they love what Temple does as a defensive player. You could argue that Temple is a better defender than what Holiday is, probably a bigger body than what Holiday is as well. And then you've got Kyle Anderson at the three. So I think Holiday comes in and I can't see any scenario in which Justin Holiday is playing 34 minutes a night for the Memphis Grizzlies. At this point, you can check all this out over on Basketball Monster. I've got him projected at about 28 minutes a night. That even might be just a little bit too high for Justin Holiday moving forward here. Maybe it's 27 a night. He could easily take the Garrett Temple role and play 30 minutes, and they drop uh, Temple down to 20. But regardless, it's not 34 minutes a night. It's not 35 minutes a night. The Bulls were playing pretty slow, but they're not playing as slow as the Grizzlies. So we're talking three or four possessions a night, fewer per game, that the Grizzlies do play versus uh, what happens in Chicago. So that's some extra position, uh, possessions that go away. Now, I can see the usage perhaps rising a little bit. The Bulls had Levine and Dunn and Markinen, and then Portis was going to return, and there's a bit of a chucking in some of those guys and the way they play. The Grizzlies have Mike Conley and Marc Gasol. So there is an opportunity there for Holiday, especially if he does come off the bench, to maybe get some more shots. But maybe that's not a good thing for what Justin Holiday does, given the fact that he is shooting so poorly. He could be an, a, a larger negative in that field goal percentage category. So that, I think, is a concern there. So in any 10-team league, I think Holiday is a clear drop, and I think he probably is a 12-team league drop as well. But it's not a situation where you're dropping someone for the sake of dropping them. Have a look who you're picking up. But I think that Holiday's run as that must-roster guy is pretty much cooked. It was already trending a little bit that way anyway with those uh, numbers really, really dropping off over the last month. It still was holding him. Now I think we're looking at him as someone who is uh, not a uh, not a must-roster guy in those 12 team formats any longer. The rest of Memphis, again, all this is updated over on Basketball Monster. I don't think a huge amount changes. I think Garrett Temple loses value. I don't think he's going to be playing 30, 31 minutes a night. He was really just a 16 to 18 team league guy before, and now he moves into the 20 team type of category. You're going to have maybe a few, uh, few less minutes for someone like Dylan Brooks. He wasn't really touching the sides of many fantasy leagues anyway, so he loses maybe a couple of minutes off his upside. Uh, perhaps Omri Caspi falls out of the rotation as we have Justin Holiday to play some of those minutes at the three. And the, the Grizzlies were definitely lacking some uh, some backups there at the small forward position for Kyle Anderson. I don't think it impacts Gasol or Anderson or Conley or Jaron Jackson Jr., Holiday is clearly inferior to all of those guys. He takes some minutes off Garrett Temple, but I think that that run of him being a 12-team league guy is uh, is pretty much cooked at the moment. Again, we'll see how this all plays out. Both Memphis and Chicago play on Friday. I don't imagine any of these traded players to actually take part in that game, so we won't get a full grasp of that. But uh, the Grizzlies do play again on Saturday, and Holiday may be available for that game. But expecting what he was doing, 35 a night, 11.5 points, um, 1.7 steals, 2.6 triples on seven attempts per game for a Grizzlies team which wasn't as three-point happy as Chicago, and not as and even since Boylan took over, Holiday was taking fewer threes, only five per game over his last six games, and the shooting had dropped right off. So he's one of those guys who needs to bludgeon his way into value by getting 35 a night, 
and I think the likelihood of him getting 35 a night in Memphis is significantly lower and yeah, pretty close to impossible versus what we saw in Chicago. Now, you might think Garrett Temple's not that good, and I agree with you. I don't think he is that good. I also think Justin Holiday is not that good. And uh, you could easily make the argument that Holiday comes in and starts at shooting guard. That's, that's fair enough. I just don't think that he's getting 35 a night. He might get 30 a night. I definitely don't see him improving on what he was doing. Um, and there is a little bit more competition when he had literally nobody competing for him uh, with him for minutes in Chicago at that small forward position. So naturally, that opens up 35 minutes at small forward for the Chicago Bulls. Selden and Brooks come over. Um, I think Selden's a better player than Brooks, and I think there's going to be a whole mess there. Now, Cameron Payne, uh, RIP Cameron Payne, he is going to be waived after this deal. Um, so he was playing some minutes at shooting guard. But what I think is going to happen and reported by Malika Andrews of, the, of ESPN is that Chandler Hutchison will move into that starting role. We've seen him start some games this season. They haven't really been pretty. They were games, though, that he started at power forward. So it is a little bit different for him. He put up good numbers at, uh, at Boise State uh, last season. Um, hasn't really been able to translate that stat-stuffing ability that he did have at Boise State last season, where he was uh, able to be a, a solid ball handler off the wing, generate assists. That hasn't happened for him so far in the NBA. The three games he started this season, he's averaged two points and four rebounds in 23 minutes with 0.7 assists and shot 20% from the field. It's obviously a very small sample size, but they are horrible, horrible numbers for Chandler Hutchison. I don't see him as a 12-team ad, a 14-team ad. I think the minutes will be there, but he's just not going to get the shots with those guys, Dunmark and Levine, Portis, even Carter, getting significantly more opportunities than Hutchison. And then you get someone like Selden and Brooks, uh, Big Shaq Harrison, Ryan Archer, Jackano, Antonio Blakeney might get a shot, and, and Blakeney and Brooks are basically the same player. So if the Bulls are really steering into rebuild and younger guys, then uh, you go with Blakeney because he's considerably younger than what Brooks is, and they do the same sort of thing. So if there's any of those guys that traded that are going to have any value, I think it's Selden. I think he's the better player between him and Brooks. I think he's a better player than Archer, Jackano, and even Shaq Harrison. But he's not going to find himself, I don't think, in a role large enough to really have a huge impact uh, in most fantasy leagues. The biggest boost is going to go to Hutchison. He's going to play a lot of minutes, but that doesn't necessarily, he's going to generate stats. But there is a little bit of hope we can hold out for Chandler, given that the fact he was able to distribute the ball quite well in Boise and put up uh, some okay score or really good scoring numbers and shoot the ball well. That just hasn't translated across to the NBA at this point, and he's more of an 18-team, 20-team league, maybe 16-team league ad, but that'd be about it, while Selden is the very, very deep league guy. Uh, many questions, people ask me, does this help Jabari Parker? No, I don't think they're going to start playing Jabari Parker now. I think they're trying to get Jabari out of there. The minutes that uh, Holiday um, vacated will be filled by Hutchison and Selden and Brooks and Archer Jackano and, uh, and the other guy, I can't remember, Shaq Harrison and Blakeney, they'll fill those minutes. I don't think it's going to be uh, Jabari there at all. Someone asked me if it helps Bobby Portis. I don't think it has any impact on Bobby Portis whatsoever. Yes, Hutchison was playing some power forward minutes, but when Portis came back, Hutchison wasn't going to be playing those power forward minutes. It was going to be exclusively Markkinen and Portis in that spot, and I think that that will remain the same there as well. So very little happens to those other Bulls guys, Dunlevine, Markkinen, Carter, Portis. They're all in, in that same sort of level. You're just going to have a step up from Hutchison and Selden getting some extra playing time, maybe Antonio Blakeney. But all in all, there's no one to rush and go grab off 12 team waivers. In fact, what will probably happen is you'll find that Holiday is the guy that gets dropped. And for standard leagues, not a huge amount more happens uh, with this deal that did get executed today by the Chicago Bulls and the Memphis Grizzlies. I think it's a fair deal for both teams. Um, you know, I shit on the Bulls all the time, but I don't have any concerns at all. I think this is a fine deal. They've got two draft picks. they got a young guy there in Selden who's uh, been shafted a little bit in Memphis. I think he can provide way more than what he did in Memphis. He could be an interesting player to watch, and if they start him and play 30 minutes a night, he's got a chance to be maybe a 14-team league guy. That would be one to watch there with Selden. I think he's a little bit away from that, but I think he's probably got more that can be explored than what we saw from him in Memphis. So he, he's, I guess, a name to watch. Probably the name I'd want to watch the most in Chicago, despite the fact that Hutchison will be that guy who is stepping into that starting lineup initially. So a trade goes down, Holiday's gone, the Bulls are going to be worse. He wasn't really... Uh, he's, I don't think it's impacting a huge amount here, but the 
the value that you were getting from him, I think that you are. And even if he does still remain a top 150 guy, he moves from being your 10th best guy to probably your 13th best guy. And when you're someone is your 13th best guy, you stream that spot, you use that to pick up hot free agents. And that is exactly what I think Holiday is becoming now. Um, again, even if he plays 30 minutes in Memphis, I don't think he's going to be able to remain a must roster player. You might have different thoughts uh, with that, of, of course, um, but I don't, and that's the way I see it. And again, all the projections for that are updated over on Basketball Monster. So you can check out my thoughts. Of course, that will all adjust when we see these teams and these guys in action and we see how this all goes down over the coming days. So trade going down, just to recap it, the Chicago Bulls send Justin Holiday to the Memphis Grizzlies in exchange. They get Wayne Seldon, they get Marshawn Brooks, and they get two second round draft picks. That'll do it. See you guys.